Well, Ted, thank you for uh, joining me and taking the time to speak with uh, a, a blogger and reaching out to our community. I know uh, my readers will be very excited to see what you have to say in just the first couple of minutes, just being in your office. It is, we're here on a Saturday. It is busy. You seem to be going full steam ahead. Uh, I can also say the same for what's going on in Washington. You know, $14 trillion uh, debt. We have the debt ceiling vote, um, Obamacare. Uh, if elected, what will be the very first bill that you will introduce um, once you get to Washington? Uh, the first bill that I hope to introduce is a bill to repeal every syllable of every word of Obamacare. Um, I think there are a great many policies President Obama has been advancing that are deeply harmful to the country, but I think none has been as pernicious as Obamacare. It was designed substantively to have the federal government take over one-sixth of the American economy. It was designed to put federal government bureaucrats between each of us and our doctors. And it was also passed in a way that was incredibly arrogant. It was jammed down the throats of the American people against the overwhelming opposition of the voters. I think that was wrong, and I intend to fight against it with my every breath every day in the U.S. Senate. Well, good. The, uh, I don't know how much you've had an opportunity to look at the last bill that passed through the House for the debt ceiling. Uh, Harry Reid seems to have tabled it without a vote. Have you had an opportunity to look at that bill, and would you vote uh, yay or nay on it, or would you make any changes? You know, there's a funny narrative in Washington, which is that the Democrats and the media keep saying that, that Republicans need to, quote, compromise. Uh, in fact, it got so much even that I was reading yesterday that the New York Times' suggestion, the Washington, the White House press uh, shop created a hashtag for their position uh, on the debt fight, and their hashtag is compromise. Uh, and, you know, the, the curious thing about it is compromise in Washington speak, in the mainstream media's language, always means conservatives giving up on their principles and agreeing with liberals. That, that, that's what compromise means. My position from day one is that I support cut, cap, and balance. I was the second U.S. Senate candidate in the country to sign the cut, cap, and balance pledge, and I think by far the most important component of it is number three, that Congress pass a strong balanced budget amendment, a balanced budget amendment that requires a supermajority to raise taxes and that limits spending to a percentage of GDP. And the reason I think an amendment is so critically important is right now, with, with Tea Party sentiments in the air, the American people are focused on the out-of-control federal spending. Unfortunately, there will come a time when that energy is not as passionate as it is right now. And the instant that happens, there are going to be a whole lot of Republicans that go right back to business as usual, that put their arms around the Democrats and become complicit in growing and growing and growing the federal government and its spending and size and power. And the best way we can constrain it is to pass a strong balanced budget amendment to use the Constitution, as Jefferson put it, as chains to bind the mischief of government. Yeah, that's, uh, I think you're exactly right on that. Um, it seems that just the, the spending we've What's going on right now, what we see at the debt billing, ceiling vote is compromise, compromise, uh, but it's not a good type of compromise. Um, right now, I think one of the most important issues that will be uh, coming up in the election, as you know, is the economy and jobs. Um, what are the three most important points uh, or proposals that you'll make in order to stimulate uh, the economy? Repeal Obamacare, substantially reduce the size and spending of the federal government, and eliminate job-killing regulations. Right now, the Obama administration is engaged in a war on jobs. On almost every front, they are strangling jobs. Part of the problem is, this administration doesn't understand where jobs come from. They think government creates jobs. Their whole stimulus plan was, we're just going to pour money into it and jobs will magically appear. The truth of the matter is, the only place jobs come from is private entrepreneurs putting capital to work to meet needs, to step out and create businesses, to grow businesses and provide jobs and opportunity. Two-thirds of all new jobs in the economy 
come from small businesses. And yet this administration is trying to dramatically raise taxes on small businesses. Obamacare is dramatically driving up costs on small businesses. The regulatory agencies and the EPA are strangling small businesses with additional costs. You look at, for example, the, the Obama administration's efforts to shut down drilling in West Texas because of a lizard. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. You look at the Obama administration's policy shutting down offshore drilling in the Gulf of Mexico, which cost tens of thousands of jobs all up and down the Gulf Coast. And, you know, one of the things I am running on, in fact, the core of what I'm running on, is a proven conservative record. Because, you know, every candidate for statewide office in the state of Texas, every Republican will say he or she's a conservative. That's the right thing to say. And so what I urge folks to do is don't listen to any of us. Instead of listening to the words we say, look to our record. I would encourage every one of your readers, come to my website, tedcruz.org, and look at the proven record of over and over again standing up, fighting for conservative principles, and winning on a national level. And compare it to every other candidate. Ask of every candidate, what are the five most significant things that candidate has done to defend conservative principles? So, for example, on the question you just asked me, I talked about the Obama administration's policies shutting down drilling because of a, a, a lizard in West Texas. As the Solicitor General of Texas, I led a coalition of states before the U.S. Supreme Court asking the Supreme Court to strike down the Endangered Species Act as it applied to an arroyo toad in California where litigation was being used to shut down development. I talked about the offshore drilling moratorium. I represented the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and 29 chambers of commerce up and down the Gulf Coast attacking in the Federal Court of Appeals the Obama administration's ban on offshore drilling. And the Federal Court of Appeals agreed with us that what the Obama administration did was unlawful. Mm -hmm. Now to kind of switch gears from fiscally, um, where are your stance on abortion and pro-life issues? Are you pro-life? Uh, I am strongly pro-life. I, I am conservative across the board. I'm a fiscal conservative. I'm a social conservative. But, you know, Matt, that's another example of the point I said, where every, every Republican candidate in this race is going to say he or she is pro-life. That's the right talking point. So the follow-up I would encourage all your listeners to ask is, okay, if you say you're pro-life, what have you done? My record on life issues. As the Solicitor General of Texas, I led a coalition of states before the U.S. Supreme Court defending the Federal Partial Birth Abortion Act that made it illegal to practice partial birth abortions. We won 5-4. I led another coalition of states before the U.S. Supreme Court defending the parental notification law in New Hampshire. And in Texas, the legislature passed a bill that was called Rider 8. It prohibited the use of any state taxpayer funds to organizations like Planned Parenthood that use those funds to provide abortions. A federal court struck down that bill. I led the appeal before the U.S. Court of Appeals. I argued it personally in front of the U.S. Court of Appeals, and we won unanimously. Well, again, I, I appreciate your uh, stance on everything. If uh, any of my, uh, the people that follow my blog want to get involved with your campaign, whether it's just volunteering, uh, uh, interning, uh, what's the best way to get involved? Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, you and I were talking a minute ago about how this campaign is at its base a grassroots campaign. There are other candidates in this race that have the ability to write millions and millions of dollars of personal checks. Our campaign is not going to be based on this, but you know what? No one's going to be able to buy this race. This race is going to be won because we are assembling a grassroots, conservative, Tea Party army all across the state of Texas. And so I need your help. I need the help of all of your listeners. I would encourage every one of your listeners and readers to come to our website, tedcruz.org. Sign up online. Sign up to volunteer. Uh, contribute online. We have had more small donors in, across the state of Texas than any other candidate in this race by a large, large margin. We've had donors from 241 Texas cities and 103 Texas counties. And beyond that, be engaged in public advocacy. Bloggers, we are seeing the community of bloggers rally together and communicate the message. Because when you've got candidates that are saying they're conservative when their record doesn't match, 
That's where bloggers and active citizens that go and look to the records can make a difference. Because when you compare the records, there is a very, very clear choice. And so I am asking for the support of activists, of conservatives, of Tea Party leaders, of Republican women, all across Texas and nationally to come together, because that's how we're going to win with a conservative army that wins this race and carries our message. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your just hectic day to uh, stop by and uh, give a message to my uh, readers and just talk about your conservative record in your campaign. I appreciate it. Thank but, you. Thanks a lot. Hey, best of luck.